is Amir Paltiel, Head of Engineering at Hyperspace. Today I'm going to talk about unconventional methods to identify bottlenecks in low latency and high throughput data pipelines. At the end of this session, I hope you will have a better perspective on how to identify bottlenecks in your code and make it run faster. A bit about myself, I'm obsessed with performance, focused on search those days, more about it later. I love to build things from scratch. And last but not least, I am a proud father to four children. So today we're going to talk about first the concept of performance optimization process, how developers measure code speed today. Then we'll continue to issues one might miss, and I'll show you a use case uh, that I have tackled in my day-to-day -day work at Hyperspace and what I learned from it. So let's start with an intro about performance optimization process. The performance optimization is a cycle where you run tests, you measure the performance of the code during that test, analyze the result, and then fix the main issue you saw in the result. And repeat your loop over till you reach the point where you're satisfied from the, from the result. And the reason for this cyclic um, this cycle of process is you want uh, to spend only 20% of the time to reach 80% result. Obviously, you can't optimize all your code. This is a Puerto uh, principle. And another reason for that is the bottleneck syndrome. If you have a few, a few bottlenecks in your code, you can, in a given time, you can only find the first one because this is the one that gets all the, uh, the load, all the back pressure goes there all the far. And uh, the next one, even if it's narrower, you, it is not noticeable. You can't uh, measure it with uh, normal methods. You have to fix the first one before you go to the next one. So what should I measure? First of, first of all, CPU time, because it's very easy to correlate between CPU time and the amount of time that the code spent in that point, uh, as opposed to memory, disk, and network, which is harder to correlate. Obviously, you should also measure mutexes and locks in your code. And uh, I want to show how developers measure the code speed today with common tools. The most common one is CPU profilers. CPU profilers show what functions consume what percentage of CPU time. There are different kinds of CPU profilers. There are event-based profilers that use built-in hooks that the runtime frames provide, usually in managed code like Java, Go, and c -sharp. They are not available in other languages. Instrumentation profilers add code, actually inject code to, to your program that collects required data using callbacks. This uh, infects the, the way that the program runs and adds some overhead that sometimes creates some bias, the distortion, the, a distortion of reality, and you should be very careful with that. The most Popular today are sample profilers, and this is the one I've been, I will show today. They collect call stack of the process in a time interval, meaning it is less intrusive, the code runs as usual, and you get very good approximation of the amount of CPU that you spent in each function. So, but that, that's some pitfall for those profilers, and any profile has its pros and cons, and, um, but uh, those are the ones that are most common. 
The most robust way to present the result of a profiling is a flame graph. In a single glance, in a very short time, you can see where the problem is. The each function, the width of the graph in each function is the amount of the percentage of time it takes. And the key points are the, is the places where the tower is split. Those are the um, points in the code that you can optimize. Uh, but there are some issues that one might miss when using uh, CPU profiles. First of all, the uh, most significant one are off CPU time. Say you, your application do some perform some I/O or logs on some UTX, it causes syscall. Then the CPU slips, and CPU profilers won't measure the time the CPU is not active. It will only measure time before and after when the thread wakes up. Um, and uh, I want to show you the, the problem is how to, to measure this CPU of CPU time. I'm going to show you a new methodology uh, using a case study we had in hyperspace and what did it did there. So, first of all, hyperspace is a fully managed hybrid search database. It is designed to make search faster, most cost-effective. Cost and scalable, meaning we are obsessed with low latency and performance optimization. So this is a sample ingestion pipeline. This is only part of the pipeline we have. This is the main parts. We have an HTTP request coming. We, we get a JSON, we pass it. We are creating some classes, documents, and Add it to our inverted indexes. We write the data to FPGA memory and then persist it to disk. Um, those, those are steps that uh, perform one after another, and we want to find the bottlenecks. So let's profile it. Uh, this is the result of a CPU profiler in flame graph. You can see that. Uh, JSON parsing took about 60% of the time of the execution. And obviously, um, this wasn't enough. This is, uh, otherwise, this session was redundant. And the thing is that JSON parsing seems like the most significant part, but it can be, and it can be replaced by binary civilization to make it faster, but it, it won't make our code run faster because there is some challenge. Once we measured how much CPU our process takes, we saw that it, it doesn't go more than two of, of, of the eight CPUs we had. So even if we add, we, we've uh, optimized this parsing, the pipeline won't run faster. This, but we have some off CPU bottlenecks that prevents us from reaching the maximum ingestion speed. So I want to present a new approach to find bottlenecks, uh, specifically off CPU bottlenecks. And we had some hypothesis. So say you have a bottleneck and you add more and more load to the system. If you measure the amount of time spent in each step, uh, as you add more load, the bottleneck will be more significant. So we added um, a few plain old simple measurements in C++ before and after each step in order to measure how much time it took. And we noticed interesting things. First of all, the flame graph was inaccurate. Uh, JSON person took only 29% of the time. And so obviously it was because this the flame graph doesn't, um, doesn't uh, also represent the off-CPU time. 
but more interesting are as we add more load to the system. Here you see the, the measurement when we, we had uh, 4, 8, 16 and more clients sending data to the system. The JSON person began decrease. It, it, it um, made it insignificant. While other part of the code, the blue part here, got bigger and bigger as we add more load. This is how bottlenecks of CPU bottlenecks behave. As you add more load to the system, the CPU will wait more time in this point of the code. And so we, we spent very little time in finding the bottleneck. The fix was a few lines of code. We, we, managed, we saw a redundant lock in the code that you could remove. And we noticed that we utilized in only one of four channels we had the, in the PCI interface to send data to the FPGA. So after we optimized this code, and we noticed that when removing the redundant block, we got down from 30 to 9 percent to 32. And once we moved to multi-channel PCI communication, it got down to 18 percent. Meaning, this, and this is from the total amount of time, which is uh, became smaller. This is in percentage. So the bottom line, we got 30 percent increase in ingestion speed and this speed. And obviously, we got to the next bottleneck. So we, we have more work to do, and this will probably be my next session. And I can cover it today, but uh, we, we proved the hypothesis that adding more load will, uh, will, will make the bottleneck uh, um, take more time. So some recap. Um, there are important factors to measure apart from CPU time. We have used a new methodology to find off-CPU bottlenecks. This new process is a significant improvement in hyperspace ingestion speed, and hopefully it can, this methodology can be applied in other places and you can use it in your code and it will make your code run faster. Um, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, if you're curious about low latency search performance and in real time, or any performance optimization, please reach out to me on LinkedIn. Um, thank you.